Welcome back to the Pop Chart, a podcast discussing everything at the top of our charts in pop culture. This week, my name is Ezekiel Gutierrez. And I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. <laughs> also known as Brandon Toda. Hi, yeah, <laughs> Forrest, Forrest Gump. I didn't at first. I was like, is this like a sling, ba- sling blade? Thing? I mean, I thought then... about that too. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> like, it's yeah. like That would uh, be a tough one to crack down. I, I think I, apparently just... <laughs> I can't do the Forrest Gump accent all that well. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Man. I I understood the reference you did you did well enough you did well enough. <laughs> thank you thank you how you doing sir pretty good what's poppinese you know we it, it's spooky season right it's october 1st it is spooky season at the time of recording That's right. um we did uh we did our 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 scare crew went out to a not scary farm last night and you've got and... a scare crew yeah we've like... got the crew we do this every year we either go to uh. knots or we go to halloween haunt uh this year was knots and and I think uh, I think we've decided that we're knots people. Um, oh. last year we did uh, we did Universal, and you know the quality of mazes there because it's mm-hmm. a working movie studio are mm-hmm. is like second to none. Those mazes are incredible, and they have really they have use of like interesting IP and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. they're all very cool, but um, it's just too crowded there. Like I think I think we did like maybe three mazes in like the five hours that we were there and it really kind of forces you to buy that like skip the lion pass that's literally like an additional two hundred dollars or something like that so we came back to knots this year and we always try to go early on in the season so it's maybe a little less crowded than closer to halloween Mm -hmm. um we're just old we're just old folks like that we don't like being around (laughs) the youths um but we did a, a a, a scarecrew first we mm-hmm. did all 10 mazes in four hours so that's that's how that's how uh empty the park was i think the most we waited was like 30 minutes but they did have three new mazes uh mm-hmm. this year and one of them is called cinema slasher it's actually located mm-hmm. in knots's like little theater there by the boardwalk mm-hmm. uh it used that that maze at knots used to be called dark ride so it was like themed after like a disneyland like a theme park dark ride thing Mm -hmm. this one is now called cinema slasher which makes more sense because it's in a movie theater um Mm. have you been on mickey and minnie's runaway railway or are you at least familiar with that ride i'm familiar i'm familiar with the ride i've not been on it yet because the last time i went to disney was still under construction so that ride opens where you're like at a movie premiere for uh this the a, mo- a movie that Mickey and Minnie are in, and you're standing at a theater. You're the you're lo- watching the screen, and then Goofy does something, and the screen basically rips open, and you're pulled into the movie, and then you're part of the story. Mm-hmm. Well, they kind of do that, but like the rated R version of that, where <laughs> you're basically walking into a movie theater, mm-hmm. and you're walking to the concessions, and like like concessions every. I think literally somebody like saw that ride and was like. We need to do this, but like the dark version of it. Mm-hmm. And you're walking to these little movie theaters that are like have projections on screens, but the screens are all ripped up. So each of those transitions is like paying homage to slasher movies. Okay. Right. So you've got like the Leatherface movie and you're walk you're you're seeing like a recreation of that, and then you have to walk through the screen and then you're in it and you're trying to like avoid Leatherface. Then there's like the Michael Myers and the this. It is really, really well done for like anybody who's like fan of slasher movies or just like scary movies in general um it's kind of like a nice little love letter to scary movies and i was like yeah this is this is what i'm looking for and Hmm. and the quality felt like a like we were at universal right okay it's there's no ip right so like where universal can get away with having the halloween maze or the stranger things maze right they don't have any of that stuff here at knots but this they did a really good job kind of like recreating that whole era of slasher movie and stuff like that and i thought i thought that was kind of a fun thing to to talk about because you know pop culture and stuff like that no for sure i mean like i feel like if i went to uh a halloween maze that'd be fine especially if it was uh based off of slasher movies because how often do you see the asian guy get killed first i mean like (laughs) basically never so yeah you're like i'm I'm fine i I think i'm safe right right like (laughs) that's true 
<laughs> that's a, that's very true. That's very true. So, but what yeah. what if they did like uh like not embrace their own branding and they did like the fried chicken maze and the high cholesterol maze or something like this and like well, so they... oh that's really scary like diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> ah! They do they do have their own thing like the um I, f- I forget what it's called. Mm-hmm. It's not the ja- It's not is it called the Jabberwocky or something like that. Oh, it's like the their own monster that kind of haunts all of them. Yeah, and I think um, so they they have that. Um, I think I think that's what it's called, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm not sure about their own world that they've created. But Calico is obviously a huge part of the park, and then so it becomes a huge part of Not Scary Farm. Calico is like the scariest scare zone to walk through. But my favorite maze still to this day, even though you know we were finally able to do every single one of them this year, including the three new ones, is mm-hmm. called. Uh, uh origins of calico and mm-hmm. so it's like the story of calico and the witch like salem witch kind of background that this that the that calico has um and that's one of the most stunning mazes that they have the attention to detail and like the you know the money that they put into this maze is really great and like adds to the mythos of calicos mm-hmm. um it's obviously like one they don't talk about during normal like summertime uh, but as soon as it becomes like scary farm season, it's like, oh, here's the dark history of Calico. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's really fascinating. Um, like a witch basically hexes the town and stuff like that. And But you've got like uh, characters in the mazes who are like the, like the witch it's herself is like literally flying above you like in some mm-hmm. of these mazes and 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 that's pretty cool. So they do they do extend their their little bit of IP but beyond not spare farm no one knows what any of that stuff is. But yeah, I think the cinema slasher one is like a pretty cool one for for folks who like movies. Pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I mean, I think it would be more interesting or more unexpected if like the origins of Calico was like pretty normal. You know, like correct, right? This wasn't like, here's dark. Some people jumped off yep. of their wagon train and just built a town. There's a yeah. scary maze for you. It's like, <laughs> and they're they're like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna be evil about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just because. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, that's what we we did that last night. It was pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, but I also heard that you did something else over the weekend where you saw a new film, a new cinematic experience, as it were. Yeah. So Friday uh, night uh gareth edwards new movie the creator came out mm-hmm. and uh that was very high on the list after seeing the trailer uh, a couple months back um gareth edwards uh famously of uh the the initial like new monster verse that's out there uh he he directed godzilla um i'm not sure how do you feel about that one how, how, well, where are you with the with the monster verse so, so the monster verse i think is a a, a great example of how to do a cinematic universe okay like it's not yeah 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 it didn't fail like the dark universe it's not like a bumbling mess like the former dceu uh i think that it's just fine like you know it yeah, knows it knows what fine. it's got it knows what it's got it swings for exactly that and yeah. when you watch it you're like that's a godzilla movie that's a king yeah. kong movie what else you got? Does it matter? Okay, here's King, here's Godzilla again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's Godzilla and Kong. Oh, that did really well. Hey, you know what? Instead of the other monster verse people, like let's just let's do this again, shall we? Yeah, yeah like, we'll just keep doing it. Now they're friends. Yeah, Godzilla and Kong, best friends forever. Best that's the that's the next one. What is called right? Yeah, we're getting a buddy road trip movie on the next one. Listen, the next one is called Godzilla X Kong, right? Like, I think so. I'm not I, sure if that's like d- the official title, but. I thought it was because I'm like, cool, they're doing another one, but like, we could be, maybe, we could be a little bit more creative. I, I mean, I, this could be the part where it starts to really sh- like, you know, tear at the seams, as it were, because it's like, <laughs> that feels like they did the end game and went, everyone loved it. Let's do it again right away. Mm. Yeah. Not yeah, that yeah, I need yeah. filler movies, not that I need $250 million filler movies, but it's kind of like, <laughs> Couldn't we have done something else in the middle? Uh, yeah. That, so, uh, yeah. But it's fun. It's fine. I like it's it. fine, I right? Like it. I like it. So Gareth Edwards kicked off this this current monster verse in right. 2014. And I was like, okay, fine. Um, but then he followed that up two years later with arguably my favorite Star Wars movie of all time, which is Rogue One, a Star right. Wars story. Right. Um, 
And so and that this is not a Star Wars only podcast, but it just Correct. all things Correct. seem to kind of like come back. Yeah, I mean, Star listen, Wars. Star Wars has been way. around longer than any of us, so yeah, there, true. you know, it's it's existed longer than us. So that's we'll right. probably we we've we've only known a world with Star Wars in it. Um, <laughs> so you know, Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, and so you know. The creator, I know a lot of people. When you when you look at the trailer, you're like, oh, so any anyone who's fans of Rogue One, you can see the connected tissue there. Mm -hmm. The creator is not a Star Wars thing, not Mm -hmm. at all. Does it have uh, shades of Star Wars? Sure, right. Gareth Edwards, a a huge Star Wars guy. Um, So it, it it tells it tells a really interesting story about AI, you know, like AI is at like the top of conversation right now. We've got, you know, strikes going on in, in creative, in creative uh, worlds uh, around AI and stuff like that. Um, But uh, the creator tells a story of, uh, you know, a world in the future in which AI is here to helpful. Where AI is more helpful in the future. In the future, in the land before time, yes. um, <laughs> so in in the distant future, uh, the AI uh, basically like helps humanity, mm-hmm. right? And AI isn't just like just the artificial intelligence, like the actual like the robots who have the AI in them. They're like babysitters and trash people, and they they do all the dirty works that humans uh, don't want to do or whatever. And in in a moment. Um, the AI attack humanity and uh, detonate a, a bomb in Los Angeles, killing millions of people instantly. So it's the, Terminator. Yeah. So shades of Star Wars, shades uh-huh. of Terminator. Okay. Uh, it's definitely got bits of, you know, sort of like the America propaganda, like Vietnam movies. Like it, it's very much kind of like an allegory for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting, you know, so the story, uh, you know, it happens, that thing happens in America, right? America gets attacked by the AI. So America is like, we're done with AI, we're destroying them all, and we're banning AI. <laughs> um, but across- Sounds very America. <laughs> yeah. Across the globe, the Republic of New Asia, uh, they decided that they're, they're like, we're, we're good. Like, we're, we're going to keep living in harmony with, with the AI and America no likey. So- <laughs> uh, they, they Long build... live AI. <laughs> so they build a uh, basically like a, a star a, a star base called the USS mm-hmm. Nomad that goes over to the Republic of New Asia mm-hmm. to hunt down and destroy the remaining AI. Um, specifically, the creator of AI. No one really I knows see. who. No one knows who or what this thing is. Right, whoever created AI. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that. That individual has gone into hiding, and so we, the Americans, are seeking to destroy the creator because rumor has it that the creator has developed a super weapon that is powerful enough to take out the nomad, mm. um, and then essentially humanity in general. Um, so that's like the basic gist of it, right? John yeah. David Washington uh, at the beginning of the film is an American uh like mercenary who is trying to find the creator mm-hmm. of of the ai hence the term creator mm-hmm. um but in like a in a mission gone bad he loses his wife and his unborn child um, Yo. and then is obviously you know that tragedy changes a person and then uh, as it would yeah a- as it would yeah um so he's now on the mission to find the creator and help try to figure out what's going on here but he's like blinded by this tragedy because he loses his wife but apparently she's uh in this world it's it's very interesting because you know we talk about ai it hits a little bit closer to home when you talk about scanning you know sc- you know scan your face and you can become an ai and it's like whoa, whoa who owns that that image then do do you have free will of that image does this company who scanned your face and so there's a lot of that in the film um it's stunning to look at like <laughs> yeah the the designs in, presented in the film like the nomad itself is like a really really interesting concept um and it's it's there 
all the time in the background of the film. Like even when it's even when they're not focused on the nomad, you can kind of see it cruising the clouds with its beam tracking where these pockets of resistance are, uh, which is very much like Death Star vibes. You know what I mean? In mm-hmm. um, the scale that he he's good at, right? Gareth Evans yes. known for his sense of scale in all of his movies. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you said that. That's like so so perfect. I hadn't really thought of that, but. Yeah, it's always just like this ominous presence, which I think, you know, if you look at like, you know, uh, America, <laughs> how we just are in general around the world, mm-hmm. um, especially like this movie takes place in what's called the Republic of New Asia, but it's like very much Southeast Asia, like Vietnam and things like that. And you're like, oh, there's some connective tissue there of like this constant ominous occupation oppression of Hey, we're not we're not here to kill the people, uh, the humans in the Republic of New Asia, but but definitely, um, definitely the AI that you've allowed to continue to to live. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's going to be collateral damage right. uh, there. Um, so that's that's a that's a tough thing too. But feels very too close to home. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think this actually feels a little bit more like it's more tender human uh focus on the film especially with john John david washington's character feels more andor than rogue one Mm. right even though it's got the big beautiful sci-fi like the designs of all the vehicles in it are just like a freaking sci-fi nerd's wet dream it's like oh yes this is incredible (laughs) stuff Ah. but when it gets really sort of personal uh Mm -hmm. it feels a lot more like andor in in that like the radicalization of people and and who who they're fighting for, who they're fighting against, and how easily that can just like change on a dime based on mm-hmm. decisions that are made. Um, but it's also like at the end of the day, it's incredible that something so like it's unique in its own way, right? I, I know I've said it feels like Star Wars meets Terminator meets you know Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. But it's its own thing, and unique IP is something that we don't get a lot of, right? Because Hollywood's, you know, the the money train is existing IP and part twos and sevens and nines, and um, it's really one. It's it's great. I I, I it's probably one of my top five films of the year so far. Mm. Um, wow. It doesn't, you know, it's it's got a Hans Zimmer score. I, I I think if you didn't tell me that, I would never have pegged it for a Hans Zimmer. Um, Hans Zimmer's, you know, maybe preoccupied doing Dune two or something like that. <laughs> um, but it is, it's it's like it looks like it costs ten times more than what it did, mm-hmm. right? You put this up n- next to any of these two hundred million dollar budget films. And I think Gareth Edwards made this for like 60 mil. Uh, Really? Yeah. Like very, very cheap movie to make. Now, I I haven't been tracking the box office. I hope, I hope that it makes its money. I don't know if it will, because I think people are just like, what is this? It's like, okay, that's Mm -hmm. the point. Go to the movies and find out what it is. Mm -hmm. And you'll be absolutely happy that you did. Um, I think there's a movie right up your alley. I know it's it's not oh. because you don't want to see this thing. Um, but I think you will I think you'll really like this movie, what it has to say um about humanity. Really, really interesting stuff. Um and I, you know, I I plan to see it another time. There was some there was a little a few little wonky like nitpicks I had about the in in the third in the in the last third of the film, mostly like geographical things like you know like when game of thrones the last season it just had to do this yeah. it was like hey yeah. what used to take one season to do is taking mm-hmm. three, 30 seconds um yeah. and so some of the last part uh the last third of the film kind of trip up a little bit in that but overall it's rushed a bit yeah the creator creator kicks ass man um it's got everything uh, a fan of like good quality sci-fi uh is looking for so, so yeah, the you're like Star Wars by way of Terminator and Pl- Platoon, or Apocalypse <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now. More, more, yeah, I guess like like 
almost like thin red line maybe mm-hmm. a little bit um yeah and again like those aren't those aren't to discredit it or say that it's um derivative in in, in any way he no, takes it's like those it's things, a genre film right it is a hundred percent, but he takes those and elevates those to a level that's like fully Gareth Edwards' vision. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's beautiful to look at. Um, it moves pretty quickly, but what it has to say about AS is really really interesting. Um, John David Washington is great a- as you know as usual, um, but the cast around it is like <laughs> I had no idea like Alice and Janney was going to be in this movie. <laughs> uh, and, Surprise. And sh- and she plays like what's the character that um from Wreck It Ralph, the like commando leader? Oh, oh, yeah. Um the Jane you Lynch know. character, yes. Yeah, the Jane Lynch's character. She she plays like that gung ho colonel. Mm-hmm. Um, but the standout here is the the main uh AI um character played by madeline yuna voiles she plays a character named alfie that's who john david washington is kind of like protecting in a way um she's incredible incredible (laughs) uh and i hope this is not like one of those things where you know like my favorite movie of all times is the fall and Kantinka untru is the little girl character in that film and that's the only thing she's ever done and listen Mm -hmm. that's the only thing she ever does fine if she didn't want to be an actress or whatever but this old girl is very talented. <laughs> uh, Watch and I'd love to be able to see her do more things because you know she's she's got she's got what it takes for sure. So nice. yeah, those are my those are my few thoughts on uh, on the creator. I think it's it's absolutely worth your time. So you'd say on a rating of not or one to ten. Oh, I'm. This is like well, t- one to tens. I'm not used to that because I'm letterboxed okay. person. Okay, so letterboxed five, then. A so one out of five, five stars. I gave, it a, I gave it a four and a half out of five. Uh, well, you know you could just double that and then that's out of ten, right? Like four true, and a half true, is true. nine. So nine, it would have been nine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, gave it, I gave it a four and a half on my on my letterboxed. It, it ended up um, in my top five. It's like mm-hmm. I've got Turtles, Spider-Verse, Oppenheimer, uh, I think Mission Impossible, and, and The Creator. Yeah, what a year. Jeez. It was a hell of a year, man. Man. I wish it we... was ending. I wish it was ending with Dune, but you know, that got pushed <laughs> back to next year. What what are you gonna yeah. do? Yeah, so, what are you gonna do? I mean, like we still have Aquaman, I guess, to look forward to. Hey, you know, speaking of that, real quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know we've talked right in our flash review, we talked about the things that are coming up, right? And that was where mm-hmm. still to come was Aquaman and Blue Beetle. Yes. So and then Blue Beetle, Beetle comes and out and absolutely off a cliff. Yep. And last week, James Gunn goes, oh, by the way, uh, this character, the Blue Beetle, will be back in our new DC universe. Like, I can't imagine (laughs) him maybe saying that before Blue Beetle comes out could have potentially helped that movie. I I don't know. I think, like, wouldn't it have been helpful for you to go out and be on the record to say, like, (laughs) hey, the Blue Beetle is a character you want to be introduced to because he's going to be a part of our history going don't wait for the movie to like absolutely tank and then be like oh (laughs) we forgot to tell you i'm like oh my god i mean i i thought i had heard that he was the first dcu character but then like yeah because they did the announcement so early on where it's like here's what's coming up next and like you know we don't say that this is anything aside from what happens before the reset like you probably should have waited to say the reset until after these films came out yeah. or don't release them or do like the straight to, to streaming thing that you did with some of the other ones, quite frankly, right. because yeah, none of these look like they should have come out. Now. Like, I guess this is with the advantage of hindsight, but like, yeah, what were the DCU uh, releases this year? It was Shazam 2, yep. The Flash, Blue Beetle, and then what apparently is the worst movie out of all of them, which is this Aquaman two. Uh, what's they weird that about, about this movie? That's what they're saying. Yeah, it's it's real bad. So, um, you know, talk about going out with a whimper. I suppose for real, a- man. He just ran out of gas. Straight up, ran out of gas. 
Yeah, and I think the, the Snyderverse conspiracy theorists, because they have to, like, have a conspiracy about everything. Yeah, they have something I so, grasp yeah, on to. Suggest that, like, James Gunn did it on purpose to, like, ruin the the last of the DCEU. Last of the Snyderverse. Mm-hmm. But, like, boy, oh, oh boy. God. Get a like, new hobby. Exactly, because here's the thing. Like, I think I don't, I don't know that I've gone on record. I really like Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He may not appeal to everybody and that's fine, but I think he's got a very distinctive style. I think he's got um yes, uh, maybe some overused tropes like with his slow-mo or with his lens flare, but, he, but that's his thing. Let him do thing. his thing. Yeah, you know let what him cook. You're into. <laughs> yeah, let yeah. the man cook. And like, I don't know, looking back at his overall filmography, I didn't love BVS, Batman versus Superman. Mm -hmm. I didn't even like the title for that matter. Uh, But like, I really liked the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. It's great. Uh, I think it's way too long, but it's still good. Um, (laughs) The man man directed Watchmen. And for that, he will always be, he will always have a spot in my heart to be like, you did the damn thing, dude. You did it. (laughs) You did it. My favorite Snyder film has got to be 300, though, because if there was ever a perfect match between filmmaker and property, I felt like that had to be it. Like he could have called it a career right there, if you ask yeah. me. And they he were been that like, was a match made in heaven. Yeah, like perfect. That you know what that one needs to be one that we go back and revisit one of these days because Hell boy, yeah. oh boy, do 300. That. 300. Stuff. Makes me want to exercise. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, man. Yeah. Speaking of revisiting movies, mm-hmm. uh, you you had a great idea to talk about hidden gems. Or, yeah, or, or, I, or the way the way I like I, the way you you put hidden gems slash staff like, picks. Yeah. Like for a forgotten forgotten favorites, maybe is a good yeah. way of putting on it. I uh, when we used to go and rent movies and mm-hmm. walk into and and have experiences with human people, um, <laughs> you would walk into like your local rental store and there would always be like the staff picks on the walls. Like, this is the section of our employees that our employees recommend. These are the movies they recommend, and usually it's like you know, yep, yep, yep. And then there's like that one person who's like. Well, this guy's man. got this guy this guy's what? got some weird taste doesn't he <laughs> um but i like the idea of like picking those ones that like maybe didn't get enough credit when it came out um maybe has a much more you know higher impact on people much later on or things like that and i'm excited to talk about this because i told you that there was a trailer for the uh the newest tyler sheridan Mm-hmm. uh film I, I think called the bike riders or something like that it's got a it's got a hell of a cast um <laughs> but no, not a very tyler good Sher- name no not tyler sheridan jeff jeff nichols yeah jeff nichols my bad just, just edit around that yeah. never happened yeah so jeff nichols's new movie is is coming out and when you suggested we talk about kind of these things jeff nichols only makes these like hidden <laughs> gems that are small that don't you know, maybe appeal to the mass audience, but are really solid, solid movies that when I watch them, I'm always like, I need, I need a platform like this podcast to be like, (laughs) these guys don't, these movies are so good. Mm -hmm. Uh, You should be watching them. And I would say like, take shelter, uh, Michael Shannon's take shelter or mud with, with uh, McConaughey. And those are movies that I think most people be like, I have never heard of those before. It's like, right. Those are, these are these like small to mid budget movies that are, are um, very, very interesting, like small human scale kind of stuff. They're not telling huge giant stories. Well, take shelter is kind of interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think like Jeff Nichols is like that perfect guy where I'd probably one week, if I worked at that movie store, be like, this is the Jeff Nichols week. I'm only suggesting Jeff Nichols movie. (laughs) Here's Take Shelter. Here's Mud. Those would be two of mine from that particular director that I would be like, maybe hasn't just seen enough eyes, like not enough eyes on these movies, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I don't want to wish it into existence, but like I can see a future where in our retirement age that the two of us are still talking about movies actually working at some sort of 
throwback movie rental facility. Oh, in retirement, <laughs> my full plan is to own uh, a movie theater and and the shops connected to it are a vinyl record store and a comic book shop. There you so, go. you know, there that's you that's if I won the lotto, <laughs> that's happening. And you can absolutely have a job there, sir. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the, <laughs> the little handouts. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I was thinking, I think maybe it also came as a result of Scorsese coming out and, you know, again, kind of bemoaning the current state of mm. uh, cinema. Uh, sure. And, and how, and rightfully so, like, a lot of the movies these days have become more like amusement park rides. And he's not necessarily wrong. He's not wrong. I mean, I like amusement park rides. I'm guilty. Like, <laughs> That's why I want to go to the movies. But oh, yeah. he's also right where it's just kind of like there should be a more variety. And the popularization, I guess, of Marvel, DC, big, you know, even Mission Impossible, big explosion, thrill ride type of movies has taken over. Uh, there still needs to be room for movies like what he was recommending, which, by the way, I think he was commenting on Nolan's Oppenheimer, which, again, is not necessarily like small movie but yeah, yeah, yeah i mean i was thinking uh, exactly of maybe not just movies that uh were small or mid-budget but even ones that didn't necessarily find an audience um at the time or didn't perform because like you said people didn't know what it was and hopefully mm -hmm. not the same fate for the creator uh the ones that came to mind for me were like baby driver and tron legacy um right away because i love those movies but those two didn't really like um make the news headlines i guess for the yeah record. no yeah uh and i think as i thought more about it i was like man there's a lot of these that i really enjoy that i think we have something to say about for each one so we might start that series uh after we uh, close up on ahsoka uh next week I believe. yeah i like that yeah yeah I mean, um, legacy man yeah I'll, oh. i can't wait to get to that one yeah um <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll cover it uh, next time on this thing that we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, where can they find us, Easy? Where, where, you know, where, where should you be listening to this if podcast? If you're interested in, in having more of this, all of our back episodes uh, are on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all the places. You YouTubes. On the YouTubes, we've got, you know, we're recording this uh, for the visual folks, for people who are, are, are more visual learners. Um, yeah. <laughs> visual <laughs> learners. <laughs> visual learners. Yeah, all, all the major podcast platforms, including YouTube, you can go watch everything and listen to everything over there. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week. And in the words of the 1990s band Semisonic, it's closing time. You don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. Can't see. <laughs> <laughs>